I've always been pretty bad at getting highlights onto my miniatures, so I figured in this video I would experiment with that and try to kind of figure it out. I made plenty of mistakes whilst trying this out, and I also had some pretty good successes as well, so hopefully you can learn a thing or two when you come along for this random journey with me. So to get my highlights in there, I figured why not try on this beastie here. So this is the Silver Dragon by Aoife and Alchemist and it will be part of their latest Kickstarter campaign. They sent this over to me and I figured why not try doing some bright highlights on this. As I mentioned at the start, I always struggle when it comes to the highlighting stage is trying to figure out the colors to pick out, things that will contrast against it, some of the washes to use as well. So I figured with this model, because it's so large, there'd be a lot of areas for me to try some different highlights on and just to experiment with and see what I could figure out. And this ultimately is the end result, so spoiler alert, I think it came out pretty well, but there's a load of steps that I put into this that were wrong, and there were some other mistakes that I made in it that almost destroyed the model as well, so yeah, let's just get on with it. So first up, I got it all printed off. This model comes pre-supported, printed it all on the Frozen Mega 8KS, and then I had to stick it all together after getting it cured and cleaned up. The model's really nice, and at first glance, I was getting some real Dilophosaurus vibes from Jurassic Park. I just like the way it's this kind of slender looking dragon. It almost looks like a giant turkey, which is what made me think of the Dilophosaurus. So then I wanted to make it really bright and vibrant, obviously for this video, but also wanted to try and take some color schemes from the Dilophosaurus. I failed in taking those color schemes from the Dilophosaurus, but yeah, we'll come on to that. So once it was all assembled, I then started using my airbrush. And first up, I primed it all black. And normally at this stage, I then lean on the Xenophil Prime and then I go to like my speed paints and stuff like that. But I left it black because I wanted that really nice dark base. The next step, I used this really deep dark green and kind of got it all over the model, hoping that I would have this nice shadow. Because in my mind, I was thinking it'd be going to like purple and pink for like the later layers. And I figured it would make a really, really nice contrasting shadow throughout the whole thing. As I move into this, I completely lost that shadow. But again, we'll come on to that. So next, trying to keep in line with the Dilophosaurus color scheme, I wanted to have some nice reds in there. So I'd hit it with this nice bright red, but I probably went too bright at this stage. Realistically, I should have gone for like a deeper, darker red to help build in that shadow and then maybe a bit of a highlight of red, but I didn't. And then the red started to wash the greens out. And I went for this like purpley pink that I always like using. And that just washed out pretty much all of those base layers I already put down. I wasn't too worried at this stage because obviously I could bring out some of those bases later on. And then I moved on to the wings and the wings take up a massive part of this model. So you've got all these big fleshy wings that are spread out. And because the dragon's so slender, I wanted those to be a real highlight piece. So I've got all like, this thrill bit coming off the side of him as well down the back of his spine on his tail he's got these beautiful like bits that are coming off all the spines almost webbing between him and I wanted that to match the wings because make a real nice focal point so basically first up I hit it with a really nice bright yellow trying to control where I was hitting the model because I didn't want to have too much overspray because I'd already done quite a lot of other work once I'd got all of that yellow in all the pieces that I wanted I'm really conscious I'm probably going to end up throwing this at some point which would be really annoying because I haven't filmed any of the money shots yet but once I got all the yellow on there I then went back in with this like, plasmatic green and I got all like the tips of the wings and tried my best to blend it between that yellow through to the green. At this stage, I was really, really happy with the results I was seeing. I had this body that was all like purpley pink and then I had these really nice contrasting but bright, vibrant wings as well. And I always find myself in this situation where I get some really nice like base coating from things like the airbrush or messing around with just putting base coats on there. And it's at this stage that I normally start to stumble because it's where do you draw the line between putting the detail back in and blocking in some colors that then go over the top of your airbrush work or your base coat work. And where do you start to pick out those highlights and trying to blend them in without then making them look like they're painted on. So it was on to those next steps. Okay, so I have done all the base coating. And I'm really happy with the way this has turned out so far. It's not quite what I was expecting. I was wanting to go for like Dilophosaurus look from Jurassic Park. But I really like it. It's, it's looking all nice and vibrant. And my thoughts are I'm going to go really like rainbowy and vibrant with this. So for like all the claws and the teeth and everything, I'm thinking like some of these blue gemstones and everything. So maybe using some, I guess, quite a light blue and then a really nice highlight as well. And all the scales and everything, I'm thinking of mixing it up and trying some of like these glitter paints. Seeing what this does, I have no idea if that will work. And then of course, because I've used all that purple, we're gonna use some Empress Children layer paints on there as well to really bring out like highlights around a face, for example. I wanna really, really make, kind of pump up that vibrancy and the pinks. This is an amazing color to use over the top of those purples. 
and we're about to find out. So I'm just gonna throw stuff on here. So grabbing all the different colors, I started to put some extra bits and details on there. Now I did skip over the bit. I was gonna obviously put in all those like gemstone type colors and wanted to pick out all the different scales. But once I'd done the claws and those really nice bright blues, my first thought was they looked a little bit too much, but then as I started to add some like highlights and bits in there for those claws, I really liked the way that they looked. And then I grabbed my colors to start doing all the scales and bits like that. But I realized that then you just wouldn't have any idea where to be looking at this model already. We have this really nice bright vibrant skin. We had all the thrills on it. We have these big bright wings and then really bright claws as well. My thoughts were that if I started to do all like gemstone type colors all over the scales, it, it would just become a mess of colors and you wouldn't be able to pick out any particular detail. So I left it there. And all I did instead is I went back in with some really bright pinks and just picked out all of the tips of the scales to make them pop. I then went back in there with some even brighter pinks and just picked up individual scales as well and just scattered them all over so that way some bits popped and some bits didn't. For his chest, for example, as well, I picked out a lot of the details, did a little bit of, I guess, edge highlighting or wherever I could and around the face I did pretty much the same. Moving across onto the base, in my head I wanted to have this really nice larvae base and my thoughts were originally I was going to go really bright and vibrant. The same situation that I had with the scales, I didn't want to have something that drew the eye too much. I wanted it to stand out as a nice piece that he was on and obviously fiery because it's a dragon, but I didn't want it to be too bright. So I grabbed my contrast paint orange and I sloshed it all over. And then once that had dried, I just went back in there with a really nice deep dark red and dry brushed it on there. And then once that had dried, I went back in with a really nice black dry brush instead. And with things like fire, or lava, for example, all the hot parts are deep inside of it. So as it gets cooler and cooler on the outside, you want to be going darker and darker. I think this turned out really nicely. There's still a lot of detail in there. It's still really interesting and themed with the model, but it doesn't draw your attention away from what's going on elsewhere, but it's a nice extra bit to have. Once I'd got all of my detail in there, I'd painted in some of the purples, I'd brought up all the different colors, it was then onto some highlight bits. And with this, I just went back in there with my airbrush paints, thinned them down, and painted them on them. So all around like the bits of the wings, where I wanted to really make some of those yellows pop, I added a bit of that in there, the plasmatic bolt as well. Around all the thrills and the bits on the spines, for example, I added some more color into that. And once I was done and happy with everything, it was then onto the shading stage. Now, normally when I use an oil wash, I don't do a varnish, but because I'd used a lot of thin layers with this and a lot of airbrush paints with this as well, I really wanted to make sure that I preserved these. So I used a gloss varnish and then left it for 24 hours. And oh boy, am I glad that I used a gloss varnish. I never normally do it, but it would have been an absolute disaster. And that's some foreshadowing for the next stage. So I wasn't sure what color to use for this. Originally, I was gonna go for a really nice deep dark green for all the shadows, and then I thought maybe I could go for some purples. But then I figured if I used dark green, I could probably pick out the base coats that I'd used initially to get this done. And then for some reason, I went for this brown. And the problem with this brown, as you can see as I start sloshing it on there, is it's not quite dark enough to add too much shadow, but it's also probably not the right color to be using on this. And I think really picking out the right color really makes a lot of sense for your model. And realistically, what I should have done is use different colors for different parts of the model, but I didn't. For the body, for example, I should have used like a really maybe deep dark purple or that dark green to bring out that base coat. And for the wings, the brown kind of works, but maybe more of an orangey brown, and that would help to pick out some of the highlights and stuff around the wings, and where like you've got the big clawy bits and the arm bits and the muscular bits. I'm not a dragon anatomist, so I have no idea. So picking out the wrong brown, I moved ahead and I started sloshing that on there. Now I wanted it to be quite thick because I wanted it to stand out. And at this stage, you can see that I probably have it a little bit too thick because it well and truly got all over the model. At this point in the video, I was planning in swapping between the brown to another color, but then a disaster happened at home and my child had something akin to the color of this happen all over the carpet. Let's just leave it there. So in a rush, I ended up trying to clean that up and deal with the disaster that was happening and trying to make sure that all of the shadow and everything got applied to this. I then ended up leaving it too long as well. So the great thing about an oil wash is you can normally go in pretty quickly afterwards. I normally leave it about 20 to 30 minutes, go with some Q-tips or some sponges and you can clean up any of the oil from where you don't want it. In this case, I'd left it too long because you know there was a bigger disaster to deal with. But you can go back in there with some of the white spirits that you used to actually mix in the first place and it reactivates the oil wash so you can take it off. In this case, I started with a Q-tip and then realized I had a lot of cleaning to do. So I grabbed some sponges and I started cleaning it up and pulling out those details. My first glance at this, I thought it was an absolute disaster, but because I'd done that gloss varnish, I was able to preserve the vast majority of the detail that I'd already put down and not lose too much of the color. 
but also keep some of that shading in there as well. So actually it didn't turn out too bad. The brown works kind of nicely. It's just not quite right. So with all of that cleaned up, I left it just to make sure it's set completely. Then I came back in the next day and it was time to add in some of the final bits of detail. Now with this, it was pretty much a case of going back in there with some of those yellows, some of the greens, for example, and just slowly bringing up all the highlights around the edge of his thrill, for example, on the tops of those spines, parts on the wings as well, mixing in little bits of white here and there just to make those details pop. Once I'd got the highlights to where I wanted it to, it was then time to go back with some pure white, making sure I used the wet palette to get them thinned down to a really nice consistent glaze, and then just adding in some really, really bright highlights on like the tips of the claws, the tips of the spines, parts of the wings as well, and that just made those things pop just that little bit more. I added a couple of extra bright pinks across the scales as well, just to make some of those pop, and then I went back in with some Nuln Oil as well. And the reason being is, like I mentioned, that brown wasn't quite deep and dark enough to separate some parts of it. So I used it more of like a panel line, like down the center of his chest, where there's some really big separation parts on the scales, for example, around the wings, for example, to separate between like the muscular part and then like the webbing parts as well, just to make it pop that little bit more. And once that was done, I was pretty much ready to keep him there. And I guess the question is, what have I learned from this experience? And the biggest thing that I've taken away from this is just the importance of using like the initial base colors that you use as a glaze. So using my wet palette and just getting down to a really nice consistency, using the back of my thumb just to kind of measure out and see what it's gonna look like, and then gradually building them up. The thing that I always find is that I'm quite impatient. So when I put a highlight color on there, I'll often look and go, well, I, I don't see any difference. So then I'll end up thickening up my paint and then I put it on there and it's just a line of paint on the model and it really stands out. And that's just a bad look a lot of the time. It looks painted on. And with this, I do still suffer from it as I'm still trying to learn how to do highlights. But on the wings, for example, I think I got a much better understanding of the consistency of my paint and I slowly built up those highlights and I think they just blend in so much nicer. It's gonna definitely take some practice to get there, but using my wet palette to thin down those paints and gradually build things up and adding some whites to it every so often has really helped me to get some nice highlights on this that I like without losing the base color. That's the other problem that I normally find whenever I do highlights is they end up looking almost like kind of chalky or washed out and desaturated. There's no vibrancy in a lot of the highlights that I've used. Whereas in this, I still think I've managed to maintain a lot of the vibrancy in those highlights whilst making them look a lot brighter. It's just ended up working out pretty nicely. The other big thing that I learned is pick your shadows or your washes and make sure you use the correct color to make everything else pop. Because I use that brown, things don't pop quite as much as I wanted to. And that's why I had to go back in with some null oil and just pick out some details just to give some separation. And it's still not perfect. But in future, I'll definitely try to figure out what color is gonna work best to use as a shadow and go from there to help my highlights pop. So let me know in the comments what you think. How do you do highlights? If you've got any tips for me, if you've got any tips for the community, there's loads of different ways of doing it. But going into next year, I definitely wanna try and improve my painting style. And one of the big things that's gonna help me is moving away from speed paints and contrast paints as like the crux that I always lean on and hopefully use more acrylics and get better at that standard base coating and then building up those highlights and just build up my painting from there. Obviously, I'll still use speed paints and contrast paints because I've got a lot of armies and a lot of projects and stuff to work on and they're a great tool to have but I personally have definitely lent on them far too much. And hopefully doing stuff like this is pushing me out of my comfort zone and I'll just get better at doing those highlights and the bits that currently I'm not great at. So thanks for watching this video. Make sure you head on over to A for an Alchemist Kickstarter. I'll have that link down below. And thanks to A for an Alchemist for sending this over. I really, really like this model. I'm not normally a fan of painting dragons, especially trying to get this much detail in there because they're normally big, they're normally bulky and muscular and all of that. But this is such a different dragon. I really like it. And the color scheme that I've gone for, I know it's called the silver dragon, so I've completely gone against what it probably is meant to look like. I love the way this pops. I think it looks, in my opinion, fantastic. And on the game table, this really stands out. Like every time I walked back in and saw it on my painting desk, it really popped like amongst everything else in my room. So I'm really happy with this. So thanks for watching. Have a great new year. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.